Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics is just five weeks away from its release, and Nintendo have just dumped a ton of new info in the form of a new trailer, videos for each of the 51 games, and an entire website. The only catch is they're all in Japanese, but thankfully we managed to translate them into English to pull the most interesting details, on top of offering our usual observations thanks to the analysis machine. So here's everything we've learned in the form of a handy dandy list. Number 1. How Multiplayer Works 51 games is quite a lot, but how exactly does that break down when it comes to playing with others or by yourself? Well, while four of the games being Mahjong Solitaire, Klondike Solitaire, Spider Solitaire, and Sliding Puzzle are strictly single-player only, the remaining 47 are based around multiplayer, with support for between two to four people, although it does seem you can play most by yourself too with a CPU filling the roles. Most multiplayer games will work fine on a single system, although some will require multiple switches due to the nature of the games, such as preventing others from seeing your cards. And thankfully, you will not need multiple copies of Clubhouse 51. There's going to be a free app downloadable from the eShop that allows your friends to join in on the action from their own switches. This will be available at launch and supports seven games, including Dominoes, Hanafuda, Richie Mahjong, Last Card, Texas Hold'em, President, and, fittingly, Sevens. So that's local play, but what about online? Well, according to the official website, 44 of the games can be played online, with the only exceptions being the four single-player games along with fishing, slot cars, and team tanks. RIP team tanks. You can play these with either your Switch friends or random rivals around the world. When playing with friends, you can use voice chat via the Nintendo Switch Online mobile app. You choose three games you want to play, and then the game tries to pay you with people who have chosen similar games. This should hopefully ensure you're never waiting too long to find players to be matched with. Number 2. Help is on the way With so many games, it can be easy for a new player to feel lost and hit a brick wall. Luckily, Clubhouse Games offers multiple safety tools to ensure you can keep playing in a pinch, as there are tutorials, various assist functions, cheat sheets, and even the ability to undo a move. These should help you keep your head in the game. Furthermore, while playing solo, you can adjust the AI level to your liking as well. Number 3. A Different Perspective Did you catch the perspective changes depending on whether you're playing your Switch in docked or handheld form? On a television, the screen is tilted, similar to how you play the game in real life. Whereas in tabletop form, you're given a more top-down perspective, giving every player an equal view spot. It's the little things. Number 4. Multi-screen support one of the new features revealed in the latest trailer was a nifty feature that was first used in Super Mario Party, in which you line up multiple switches with each other to create one giant, if misshapen, display. In this case, three games have optional support for this. First up is Slot Cars, which allows you to create gigantic custom tracks that can span up to four screens. And secondly, there's Fishing, which allows you to create unique rivers and seas by lining up the systems in specific ways. And in a neat touch, propping up the system at an angle, such as with the kickstand, will create a waterfall. And third, there's Team Tanks, allowing you to create a massive playing field, taking down AI foes with the team at the ready. And finally, we have Piano. Wait, Piano? That wasn't on the list of 51 games. As it turns out, it's actually a bonus game, though we use game loosely, as it's more just a fun way to unwind. With Piano, players can play a recital using the Nintendo Switch touchscreen. By lining up multiple Switch systems, you can change the tones the piano will play. While you perform the songs of your dreams, others can chime in by using their Joy-Con controllers as maracas. Neat! Number 5. The Wii's back, baby! Sort of. Did you catch that in bowling? You're actually going to swing the controller like a Wii remote? Uh, a bowling ball? Yeah, this seems to be Wii bowling in everything but name, and we couldn't be more excited. And though darts wasn't in Wii Sports, it too is played using motion controls, having you aim the Joy-Con as if it were an actual dart. Though this one also features a dedicated power meter that precisely checks your movement, forcing you to adjust to hit certain targets. And Wii Sports isn't the only Wii game to get some love here, as Wii Play is also represented with a couple of returning classics. First up is Shooting Gallery, which is clearly based on Wii Play's shooting range, only now with the Joy-Con acting as your Wii Remote pointers, allowing you to quickly aim directly at targets, including the balloons and UFOs that return from the original game. And then there's the two tank games, clearly based on Wii Play tanks. Team Tanks is the closer of the two to the original Wii experience, letting you and a teammate work together to take down a team of enemy tanks from a top-down perspective. Whereas in Versus Tanks, you'll battle an opponent one-on-one, -on -one, with the camera following behind your tank. In both cases, we see your primary shots will ricochet off a wall once before exploding, just like in the original game. This makes careful planning a must for both attacking as well as avoiding incoming fire. But for as similar as the overall concept is to Wii Play Tanks, there are some important differences too. 
For one, it seems pointer controls are out, which also means you can no longer aim independently of the direction you're moving in, which is a little disappointing. In this way, it actually plays near identically to Shell Shock Deluxe from Super Mario Party. Only now, you have the addition of a Lob Shot 2 which explodes on impact, and this seems to replace the mines that were in the original Wii Play tanks. And interestingly, this mechanic can be traced all the way back to the original version of Shell Shocked in Mario Party 2. It's all connected. Number 6. Sports Toy Edition While bowling and darts offer a more true-to-life experience, there's a variety of other sports represented in toy form, but they seem to have a bit more depth under their cute exterior than you may expect. Toy Tennis has interesting movement limitations, such as how you can only move left or right or up and down along the slots, making some plays riskier than others at times. The video on the website also demonstrates you can pull off a smash shot if you time it just right at the net. Toy Baseball looks a bit different to similar versions that appear in Super Mario Party and Wii Party U counterparts. There are now more players on the field, the point spots have been moved around, and you have manual control over the speed of your throw. Additionally, it seems the field players will move on a specific pattern, back and forth. Toy Soccer, or football as it's really called, is very different from a regular foosball table, with the players moving in sets along the field vertically rather than horizontally. This gives them a greater spread, plus 360 degrees of movement. Well, outside of the goalie, of course, which you also seem to have independent control of. Finally, Toy Boxing showcases a guard option, which can knock an attacking opponent off the field. Number 7. More Game Observations while most games in Clubhouse games are self-explanatory, there are a few other more unusual ones that are worth exploring in a bit more depth. Take Golf for example, which offers full-size three-par courses, but from a top-down perspective with simplified controls, allowing you to freely aim and then shoot using a power meter. Oh, and there's visible wind too, and this can impact where the ball's gonna land, so be careful. Fishing looks similar to how it works in Animal Crossing, offering different sized shadows for you to target from the shore and then try to reel in. And yes, that includes the freaking boot too. There's no escape. At least there's no X. In Sliding Puzzle, the goal is to rearrange the pieces, as a turtle follows the course in real time in an effort to gather all the gems without having the turtle reach a dead end. Oh, won't someone help him up? Then we have this six ball puzzle game, which appears to be nearly identical to the Castle Clearout mini game from Mario Party 9. There are five different colored marbles, and the goal is to connect six of the same color to clear them out of the way. But by clearing them out in specific shapes, such as the hexagon here, different effects will happen, such as clearing out every marble of the same color, while sending a load of hot garbage to your opponent. Nice! Number 9, Nintendo Cards. Did you catch that? Throughout all the different card games being shown, we can see several types of card types being used. Beyond the usual deck of cards we're all used to, Matching Speed and Hanafuda offer up a special Super Mario variant that Nintendo actually used to manufacture at some point. With Matching, the shape of the card changes entirely, giving them more of a squared look. Point is, we wouldn't be surprised if you're able to choose the card type you want to use, which is a nice touch, especially when Mario is involved. Number 10, Flower Power. Speaking of Mario, did you catch the tiles from this scene of Mahjong Solitaire form what appears to be the Fire Flower from Mario? It's the little touches. And there you have it, everything we could dig up in Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. Did you find anything that we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain and also ring that bell for a lot more on Clubhouse Games and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye!